You're listening to Tim Bolkley's 5-Minute Bible. Coming back to the heart of worship. There's a worship song we quite often sing at church that contains a line about the heart of worship. Where would you go for the heart of worship in the Old Testament? Not Psalms. Because, frustratingly for scholars, Psalms doesn't contain whole worship. It contains bits. It contains resources for use in worship. Songs and parts of liturgies. So, where would you look for the whole thing? One of my colleagues suggested that you look in one of the most boring books of the Bible. Leviticus. And he's right. Because in Leviticus you get the whole thing. You get the very heart of worship too. There at the heart of the book of Leviticus. For all sorts of complicated reasons we won't go into. The heart of Le the book of Leviticus is chapter 19. And chapter 19 begins, The Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to all the congregation of the people of Israel, and say to them, You shall be holy, for I, the Lord your God, am holy. That's the heart of worship. It's not just the heart of Leviticus. Worship is about the sincerest form of flattery, imitation. Worship is about us becoming holy, like the God we worship is holy. So of course worship begins with praise. What else can you do when you recognize that you're in the presence of a holy God? Think of Isaiah's vision in the temple in chapter 6. He catches a glimpse of the grandeur of Yahweh, the hem of whose robe fills the temple. And he catches a glimpse of those mysterious seraphs with their six wings. Holy, holy, holy. Once means holy, twice means holiest. The Kadosh Kadoshim, the holy of holies, the most holy place in the temple. Three times means the most most holy. He catches a glimpse of this holy and awesome God. He catches an echo of the heavenly praise of God. And that's obviously the first thing we do in worship. But then, like Isaiah and like Leviticus, we need to move on to the second thing. Because just as if you catch a glimpse of the awesome holy God, you can't help but praise. If you catch a glimpse of the awesome holiness of God, you can't help but recognize that we are unholy. Broken, spoiled, twisted. And therefore, unable to tolerate the presence of the Holy God and like Adam and Eve in the garden we'll hide and so you need the second important phase of worship confession and absolution and that's why many of the sacrifices in Leviticus are all about just that getting put right again with God and if our worship doesn't contain that then whatever we're worshipping it's not the holy God but if you have been put right with the holy God then surely you must thank God for the wonderful gift and so again that's why so many of the sacrifices in Leviticus are azebatoda sacrifices of thanksgiving and of course if you're on the way to becoming holy like God is holy then your heart will have to cry out for others. You see, the heart of worship in Leviticus, or indeed in Isaiah, is that old-fashioned acronym, ACTS, A-C-T-S, Adoration, Confession, Thanksgiving, and Supplication, an old-fashioned word for asking God for stuff, for others particularly though also for ourselves.